Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to talk to you about the cyanobacteria in my freshwater tank and how I used peroxide to try to get rid of it. So let's start off with the basics. What causes cyano? Now typically there's three reasons cyano develops in a tank. The first is too little flow. Well, this is a betta tank, so it has to be low flow. Especially because my betta has beautifully long fins, I have to keep the flow down. If this is what's causing my cyano, then I'm kind of out of luck. The second reason would be overfeeding, which can lead to a buildup of uneaten food that the tank bacteria just can't break down. I feed my betta slowly, pellet by pellet, so it's very unlikely that overfeeding is causing my cyano issues. The third reason is too much light. Now I run my tank light for about six to seven hours a day. Usually I turn it on at about noon and off around six to seven p.m. There's quite a bit of indirect light coming into the kitchen where my tank is, but I still really doubt that this is the main cause of my cyano issues. My plan of action was to do a three day blackout of the tank and then treat the cyano with 3% hydrogen peroxide. I also did two two gallon water changes back to back. After the three day blackout, the cyano seemed to lift off of the leaves of my plants. I've done a couple of blackouts, but it never seems to completely kill off the cyano, just loosens it so it becomes easier to suck out. So the first thing I wanted to do was to get my betta out of the tank to ensure that the hydrogen peroxide didn't affect him in any way. I also had to remove my media basket because hydrogen peroxide can kill off the beneficial bacteria. I did read up online that you could use up to one milliliter per gallon of hydrogen peroxide. This is a five gallon tank, but only holds about four gallons of actual water. To be on the safe side, I decided to only use three milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. I targeted the areas of the tank that had the most cyano, and while I let it sit in place, I started pulling out the bigger clumps with my turkey baster. You can see little bubbles rising to the surface from where the peroxide is in contact with the cyano. After leaving the peroxide sit for about 10 minutes, I went ahead with a two gallon water change. I also siphoned out the back chambers to ensure I got all of the loose gunk out of there and any cyano that may have been sucked into the filtration. I added back clean water, ran the pump for a few minutes, and then did a second two gallon water change. I did these back-to-back -back water changes to ensure that any remaining hydrogen peroxide was diluted enough to not affect my fish. Once the tank was filled, I checked that my plants didn't become uprooted and pulled out any dead leaves. I gave Wonton, my fish, a quick acclimation and released him back into the tank. The last thing I did was to add in a bit of API Quick Start and Microbacter 7 to help boost the beneficial bacteria in the tank. I also added some flourish for my plants as it does seem to help their growth. Now this deep clean and hydrogen peroxide definitely reduced the amount of cyano in my tank, however it's still not completely gone. I also have to keep in mind that this is a new tank and that most new tanks go through an ugly stage. My main reason for attacking the cyano so hard is because it tends to overtake my plant leaves and I do worry about my plants starting to die back. This is most evident in my A. Reneki, which has lost an incredible amount of leaves since I added it to the tank. So it's been a little while since my hydrogen peroxide treatment and I still have cyano, though it's not growing back nearly as fast. The good news is that the Rotala, Cryptwenty, and the S. Repens are starting to show a lot of growth. I plan to keep up with weekly water changes and may even do another blackout in the future, as that seems the easiest way to loosen up the cyano for removal. Most of the cyano is along the substrate and on the Reneki, so at least it's not taking over the whole tank anymore. I have one last hunch as to why I may be having these cyano issues, but I'll have to do some long-term experiments to come up with a conclusion on if this is just a symptom of a new tank or not. I hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting, and if you have any comments, please leave them below. I hope you decide to subscribe if you're not already to see how this tank progresses. I appreciate you all watching, and I'll see you next time.